Hey everybody, it's Team DaCosta, the Search Authority, and I'm doing an updated video on CR Excavator. And the reason I'm doing this is because something's changed. As you can see in the very top in the blue, improvements have made to our risk scoring algorithm, allowing more risk factors to be considered. As a result, the extension total risk scores have changed. Now, what does that mean? What that means is, whereas before you wanted to keep it below a certain number, um, I don't recall off the top of my head what the number was we were looking at, four or 500. Now it's a little bit different. Now it's almost twice that. You want to keep it below uh, 1,000. Uh, and you want to look at the individual um, different things that they're looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one in here. <coughs> and I'm going to go ahead and open. Now this is for a DNNA LinkedIn automated recruiter. Now, what we have is this. First thing you see is see content security issues, uh, permissions issues, risks issues. The nearest the way in reading this that it makes sense to me in and in, in understanding is basically we don't want any factor to be above 500 as long as the factors are below 500 we're good so let's see what we have uh, and then a combined score below a thousand so uh the content security policy risk from content security policy 378 so that's below uh 40 for risk of permissions 120 here 110 here 280 111 now one thing that's interesting that I look at, because this is probably the most important thing, is risk over time. Um, as you can see, uh, when when the tool first came out in its first version, the risk was higher. And then as new versions came out, the risk got lower and lower. And that tells me that the newest version of the tool is actually pretty darn good. And if you go up here, you see this box up here, you can actually look at the different versions of the extension to decide which one is which. But we're looking at the 15126, but this is an overall up. But when you come down here and you know, you'll notice that the newest version, the risk is very, very, very low um, here. It's 831 as a total. Now, keep in mind, that's a total of all of these. Um, we don't want any one risk factor to be above 500. I mean, 881 as a total, when you're looking at one, two, three, four things, is, uh, excuse me, four main categories with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight subcategories isn't too bad. Um, these these factors can get up there quite a ways higher than what they are now. So this is actually all not all that bad. So let's keep going and look at what we're going. The only high risk thing here, and this is what I also look for, is this one right here. Gives your extension access to privileged fields on tab objects used by several APIs, including Chrome tabs and Chrome Windows. In many circumstances, your extension will not need to declare the tab submission to make use of these APIs. So what they're saying is that you're going to have some control over tabs. Now, if you know anything about the tool, the reason for that is because it opens a tab to do its job. And so that's why it needs some control over them. So let's keep going. Optional permissions. Nothing. Requested OA authorizations. None. Those are good. Now let's go back up here one more time to storage. It's only Chrome storage. A the API. Active tab. Again, Chrome API. API. So basically everything it's doing is just access to APIs, which is the way it should be being done. Now let's look at the, the JS vulnerability. Uh, data container property, tooltip, bootstrap, bootstrap. Nothing there is big. This was the only one that's high, so let's check that out. Uh, XSS in data template, data content, data title properties, toolpit. So basically what it's saying, and it's one link, um, and we get to learn more. So let's find out more about that um, here. And see, uh, and sanitize template option for toolpit. So basically it is a template that they're using uh, in the tool. So that, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a template's just fine. You need templates. So they're accessing a template. That's not a big deal. Then we come down to the bootstrap stuff and we look in the same template and then we're looking at the next bootstrap, same template. So so basically the only thing to worry about there is the fact that they are accessing a template and then bringing it in. So they obviously, you know, that that's something to take into mind. We get down to these other JavaScripts. There's nothing big here. We get down to the content security and it really doesn't have any. And then we look at the communications and basically everything is either Google Analytics, LinkedIn, which makes sense. And um, the tool itself. Now, my only concern here is going to be the fact that it is making communications with LinkedIn. So you got to be careful there. LinkedIn could, like with most LinkedIn automation tools, they could get mad at you. I'm not going to, you know, but this isn't about whether or not you can get in LinkedIn jail with this tool. I haven't yet, but I also don't use um, a lot of automation tools. This is really the only one I use, and so I don't get into a whole lot of trouble. But you do need to keep in mind, when you see that many back and forth LinkedIn potential communications, you got to start wondering, hmm, 
other than that, no big deal. When we keep going, uh, we, we don't see anything. And now here's a, another one that I, I always pay attention to. It's entry points and dangerous functions. Um, there are none. Now we can view entry points. So let's see what that gives us. Let's see if we can check on that and see what entry points we are getting, if any. Um, and it's loading, which is fine. Okay, here we go. Let's see. It has loaded entry points. Oh, it's still loading. Down here are other tools that they consider to be uh, in the same ilk related. Um, you'll see higher tools there, duck soup. Um, you'll notice uh, a few in here, machine sourcer, some others. Uh, it's still loading. Now, the fact that it's still loading tells me there's probably no big deal. Uh, when you have to take that long to load something, it means there's either a lot of little stuff or nothing really. Um, so that's it. So from based on their new, like set up here, you got the new improvements for their algorithm and they're looking at more risk factors. That tells me that's good. It also tells me the numbers are up in looking at all the data and all their documentation. We are now instead of looking at, I believe, a 500 below as the good good point. We're now looking at a thousand or below as the good point. And more importantly than the thousand is making sure no one of these are over four or five, 400. This is 378. And then also take into account this take into account what version the first version was having problems a big problems last version a lot better still hot still you know it's still not super low i mean it's still over 800 but it's there but it's not the thousand which is now what i would consider to be the danger will robinson number um and most importantly even more though than that is these individual numbers making sure that none of them are over uh 500 and for me this one right here is probably the biggest the permissions uh, that, that always concerns me, um, because, um, you know, that's what you give it and always check out what permissions it's given. If you look down here and look at the permissions, I don't see anything here where you're giving permission to your Google out your Google, uh, Gmail email address or anything like that. And that's important. All this is kind of stuff you would expect an extension that uses tabs and stuff would need to have access to. And you only have one that's really high and that's based on the tab, which again, makes sense. So um, there you go. I want to do a new video to get you updated since the numbers have changed. I think, like I said, my original video on this, I believe, was uh, four or five hundred was the number. Now, because of their increased security, the numbers go up because they're looking at more things. Um, and uh, so, so you have to take that into account. I mean, if you're only looking at four things and the highest you can go on each one is 100, then 400 wouldn't be good. Um, we're looking at two, four, six, eight things. And, uh, before we, I think when I first did, it was only four or five things. So naturally they're going to double the risk factors. You got to double the, 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 the number that's considered good or bad. Um, one other thing I want to take a note is you see right up here where the high risk factor is 450. Um, remember I said in each individual category, 450, you know, 500 ish. Well, that's why. Um, they told me when I when I did some research on this tool, when I spoke to somebody, that 450 is like the max for each category. Um, and so I want to take that out. There are four categories. However, there are eight descript subcategories. So that's why everything, all the math went up. But if you look at the four categories, that means the max you could see here is 1800. If all of them were maxed out 450s, uh, which could happen. So my logic being, and then talking to them and looking at all the documentation like that, is as long as we can keep our combined score a thousand or less, I think we're pretty safe. And as long as no one functions above that 450 mark, we're fairly safe. Those are the two things. As long as the risk over time is going down, and then most importantly, the permissions. As long as it's not giving permissions to things we don't want it to have permission to, I'd say we're fairly safe. Um, you know, uh, you know, nothing's 100%, but this, this definitely helps you. And that's all it's important to me is make sure we help, uh, that we can help you mitigate this as best we can. So long story short, that's the latest and greatest on the, um, CR excavator tool. My name is Dean DeCosta, the search authority. May the source be with you.